What's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. I'm Crystal Divine Queen, and this is my Indigenous Lifestyle. Thank you for tuning into this video. It's been a minute since I uploaded any content. So I want to give a special thank you to all of my loyal subscribers out there. I know y'all been waiting. Crystal, where is the videos and where is the content? We need that good stuff. And I also want to have all of you guys welcome our new subscribers. I've gotten a lot of new subscribers since the last time I've uploaded a video and I just want to acknowledge you all and show my gratitude for subscribing to the channel. I hope that you all put on your notifications so you will be notified when this video comes out and welcome to my indigenous lifestyle. Let's just get right into it. The last video that I uploaded, I believe it was me breaking down what the first trimester looks like when you decide to have an unassisted prenatal care experience. So this video, I'm going to be breaking down what the second trimester is going to look like. Now, first trimester video, I talked about basically managing a lot of lifestyle changes. They're very simple changes, but they can be very challenging. So watch that video so you can find out what that is about. Moving on into the second trimester, you're going to have a lot more energy and a lot more things to do. The second trimester can be anywhere between 13 to 14 weeks to 24 to 28 weeks. It does vary. Every woman's pregnancy is different, but more importantly, we don't know when the baby is going to be due, right? We, I mean, we know a due date, but we don't know when the baby's going to come. The baby could come early, the baby could come later. We just don't know. It's hard to pinpoint these things. And a lot of women, they count by the weeks and they're like, oh, I only got two more weeks left and I'm in the second trimester. And then those two weeks pass, pass and they're still feeling horrible. So I say that you can kind of gauge when you're transitioning into the second trimester just based on solely how you feel. When you start to feel better, when the morning sickness or the all day sickness goes away, when you start to feel like you have more energy and you just are starting to appreciate and enjoy being pregnant. Um, that's when you know that you're going into the second trimester. The second trimester is also a time when we like to announce the pregnancy, okay? Um, but when you are choosing to not go the normalized OBGYN prenatal care route and you're choosing an unassisted prenatal care route, a lot of women do not like to share that news, which is completely understandable because a lot of people like to project their fears onto us, right? And what we want to do is make sure one of the lifestyle changes I talked about in the first video was managing stress, making sure that we're not stressed out. Out. And if you have to go into a defensive mode about, you know, why you're choosing to do things this way or just explaining to people why you're not afraid of the things that they're afraid or worried about, that can be stress. Defending yourself and having to, you know, just kind of be combative in any type of way, that can be very stressful. And we want to avoid that altogether. So, However you decide to go about announcing your pregnancy to the world, whether you decide to wait or you decide to, you know, only disclose certain information, it's, I mean, set that boundary, sis. You can absolutely tell someone, listen, I just wanted you to know that I'm expecting a baby. I don't want to go into details about all of that with you set their boundaries sis and they have got to just respect it okay um but whatever you choose to do it's totally fine and it's up to you but just do what is best for you and only you know what's best for you so like i said in the second trimester there are more things to do versus in the first trimester but i want you to not get overwhelmed when i start going into everything okay everything i'm about to say is something that you can definitely manage on your own and also, I want to just let it be known that I am gearing all of this information in this video towards women who are low risk. And that's not to say that a high risk pregnant woman cannot have unassisted prenatal care, okay? Um, it's just that it's going to be a little bit more complex for her and it's really a case by case basis. So this video is very general for my women out there who are considered low risk, um, but for women out there who would be considered high risk, please don't get discouraged if this is something you want to do. Just know that it's going to be a little bit more complex for you and you're going to need to seek, you know, direct individual 
um, advice on how to proceed and how to make this work. Now, normalized prenatal care appointments in the second trimester usually happen about once a month and they tend to be very quick. Typical things done at these appointments will be tracking the baby's growth by measuring the fundal height, listening to the baby's heartbeat, also managing and tracking the mother's weight, how much weight she's gaining, how much weight she's losing, uh, checking her blood pressure, also checking her urine. Um, they usually test urine uh, for blood and sugar um, and these things are so that they can monitor whether or not you're going to have gestational diabetes or high blood pressure but if those were the case i want you to be aware that these are things that you can manage on your own and when you're managing things like this on your own you can manage them more frequently than once a month Okay, now big things to expect from your OBGYN when you are choosing that route for prenatal care in the second trimester is going to be ultrasounds, vaccinations, and sexually transmitted infections. Okay, I've made a couple videos on ultrasounds. I highly recommend that you go and check that out. It's a lot of things that we don't know about ultrasounds and it's way much bigger than just, you know, getting to see your little baby on the screen or getting that picture. Picture, okay a lot of times when we see the baby being really active you know we think oh my gosh they're just they're moving around and they're active and that's a good thing and it is but not the reason why they're moving around you know ultrasounds um, don't have a positive effect on the baby um, so that's usually why they're really really active when we get the ultrasound but check out those videos um, as far as vaccinations go, I personally do not condone vaccinations of any kind, especially to a pregnant woman, but do your own research on that. Just know that that is something to expect. And if you're choosing to do the unassisted prenatal care route, it's not going to include vaccinations, which I personally think is very beneficial for you and the health of your baby, just overall maternal health. Sexually transmitted infections or diseases, of course, you want to limit the part, the amount of partners that you have sex with when you're pregnant. Um, you want to make sure that your partner is someone that you can trust and you can be safe with because we don't want to get anything because depending on what it is, you may not be able to treat yourself naturally and holistically. Um, or you maybe could, but the process isn't really safe when you're pregnant. So it makes things a lot more complicated than they need to be. So... If you feel like you need to go get tested, you find out you're pregnant, go to a clinic. You don't necessarily have to have that OBGYN. You can go to a clinic, you can get tested for free. You can even get treatment for free. But personally, I feel like any woman, any queen out there um, who is in alignment with, you know, going away from the normalized way of prenatal care and managing it unassisted on their own it's already going to be in alignment with her wound and just making sure that everything is okay and she's not out here being reckless and you know having sex with a bunch of people or you know just in danger of sexual transmitted infections or diseases but still if you need to get tested for any reason you can do it go to them clinics utilize them clinics girl and get whatever treatment that you may need so that you can get that taken care of before it's time for the baby to come out. Second trimester is also about a lot of testing. Now, don't get me wrong. They may want to do testing when you're in your first trimester. But the second trimester is when you're really going to be faced with getting some kind of test or some kind of screening. Um, there's a there's genetic testing, which requires drawing blood. Um, and that pretty much assesses anything dealing with genetics or chromosomes and the thing is it's genetics and chromosomal so if any results were to come back with any conditions or abnormalities um the testing itself is not preventative so there's nothing you can do about it um it's going to be what it's going to be 
I personally feel like we should really take into consideration about finding out these things while we're still pregnant because however we feel or whatever way we process things, we're not processing any of it or feeling any of these emotions alone. The baby is feeling it too. So any thoughts, any programming that we take in, it's not just us, it's the baby too. And you don't want to give birth to your baby and your baby already come out of the womb, earth side, experiencing depression experiencing sorrow experiencing self-sabotaging thoughts or just thoughts of doubt about what their capabilities are these are real things that can happen vibrations is a real thing and it's something that we really don't take into consideration a lot um we kind of have this notion that we can find it could be a good thing finding out things ahead of time but when you think about it in the aspect that i just mentioned is it really a good thing to you know know about something and, and spend the rest of your pregnancy worrying about things that you cannot control me personally i don't think it's really worth it also in the second trimester anywhere between 18 to 20 weeks there will be talks of anatomy scans and anatomy scan is basically an ultrasound but they're assessing the baby's kidneys limbs um all etc all things and they're searching for any kind of birth defects or fetal conditions and then of course the sex of the baby also for the mom they'll also be checking the placenta and just seeing how it's positioned making sure it's in the right way now don't get me wrong anatomy scans can be beneficial um they can let you know things however it is not preventative so whatever abnormalities or conditions come back you're going to react to it the same way you would pregnant as you would when you're not pregnant. And the only difference is, again, you're going to spend the rest of your pregnancy with this thought in your mind, thinking about it, trying to prepare for it and everything that you're going through, the baby is going through too, rather than the baby is born and you find out about these things either right away or later on down the line when they're not meeting all their milestones and then you can you you can be able to process things in private okay because we're human we're going to feel how we're going to feel if our baby comes out anything less than a hundred percent healthy but you can process these things without worrying about the things you're naturally feeling affecting the baby you know you can process in private and then you can go out the room you know to the baby and be that strong support system that they're going to need i think it's really important for us to understand that when you choose the route of unassisted prenatal care you're really going to have to not be conditioned anymore to seeking validation outside of thyself okay it's all about getting in tune with thyself trusting thyself and just being the most positive person you can be or optimistic person you can be about just your birth experience and not just your birth experience but birth itself and and what we were designed to do and just having faith in that it's imperative for low risk pregnant women who are choosing this natural holistic indigenous path of prenatal care to just be aware that you are now responsible for yourself which should not come to any of us as a big surprise because we're always responsible for ourselves and even when we do have the OBGYN to go to for our prenatal care you know those appointments are far and few in between we're with ourselves on an everyday basis so we are already managing our prenatal care predominantly but we've just been conditioned to think that these checkups are the major key points in our prenatal care so OBGYNs will also want you to take the glucose test in the second trimester <laughs> if you are not familiar with this this is that orange drink that doesn't taste very well that bright orange liquid drink 
or gestational diabetes. This is a condition that develops during pregnancy when too much glucose or sugar stays in your blood instead of being utilized for energy. If you have gestational diabetes, then more weight will get to your baby and this will ultimately create a lot of complications. But if you are not already a diabetic and you're eating healthy and you're doing everything that you're supposed to, then the chances of you getting gestational diabetes are really not low. Likely. So here's my thing with the glucose test. That orange drink is literally a cup of or a bottle of glucose. Like it's it's filled with the very thing that you don't need. And they're telling you to drink this thing so they can see how your body reacts to it. How your body reacts to something that you don't need to be drinking at all. I cannot make this up, you guys. They give you this drink, they tell you to drink it, then they wait, make you wait for an hour. Um, then they test your blood glucose levels. And if they're high, then they're gonna give you some more to drink. They're gonna have you wait for about three more hours and they're gonna test you again. And then here's the kicker, okay? The end result is always going to be to manage your diet and manage your exercise, okay? This is something that you should already be doing anyways. Most women pass this test and most women are low risk and not on the verge of being a diabetic. But even if she were on the verge of being a diabetic before getting pregnant and now she's pregnant and chances have increased, doing the very thing that I mentioned in the first video, uh, managing the simple but challenging lifestyle changes can be the solution to a lot of problems and can also be preventative to a lot of complications that can occur when you are pregnant. I know it sounds very simple, probably too good to be true but you decide for yourself what you want to do i just want you to be aware that drinking that drink is not necessary okay all you need to do is just take care of yourself eat well exercise stretch do yoga blah 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 make those lifestyle changes that i mentioned in the first video now if you do feel the need to want to um measure your blood glucose level there are alternatives than the orange drink yes that's right you don't have to drink that sugary orange drink with a lot of artificial flavors and preservatives okay here's the thing why don't you consider real foods <laughs> anything whole natural food high in sugar okay you can utilize this instead of the orange drink you can try that instead of the orange drink and then allow them to draw your blood and check your glucose levels or you can invest in a glucometer the glucometer is inexpensive and very easy to order and it's very easy to do okay so when you wake up in the morning you're going to check it you want it to be 86 or lower after you have your first meal, after an hour, you're going to check it again. You want it to be 140 or lower. Um, then after a few more hours, you'll check it again. You want it to be 120 or lower. And then later on, a few more hours later, you're going to check it again. And you want it to be back to normal like it was first thing in the morning, 86 or lower. Okay? So you do have options, sis, and there are alternatives if you feel like you need to be aware of this because not trying to make light of the situation, gestational diabetes is a serious thing when you're pregnant. Now, between 24 to 28 weeks, there will be talks about blood tests to check your blood count and your iron levels. Keep in mind, blood tests is also how they check for gestational diabetes as well. If you've ever been pregnant and you've taken the normalized prenatal care routes, you know that they draw blood just about every single time that they see you. But symptoms of having a low iron can be fatigue, um, tiredness, palish yellow skin, chest pains, rapid irregular heartbeat, cold hands, feet, uh, shortness of breath, headaches, feeling lightheaded or, uh, lightheaded or dizzy, or even trouble concentrating. All of those can be symptoms of your iron levels being way too low. Low iron levels is a form of anema, and there are three types, okay? So there's iron deficiency, there's folate deficiency. Notice I said folate and not folic acid. And then the third one is the vitamin B12 deficiency. All of these things you can um, have included in your prenatal vitamin to take as a supplement 
along with making sure you're eating foods that are rich in iron and rich in folate and rich in vitamin B12. These are all things you can do to avoid having any kind of deficiency or any kind of anemia. Eating these foods and taking these vitamins daily is what is required to manage it and make sure that you do not lead to having any deficiencies in any of these three areas. But you have to pair them together, okay? You can't think that just taking the vitamin uh, one to two times a day or three times a day is going to be enough. Your diet is very, 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 very major, a very major key. Now, one thing from the blood test that is really important is making sure or finding out whether or not you are RH negative or not, okay? If the woman is RH negative and she gets with a man who is positive, then the baby is going to be positive because the man determines this for the baby, okay? And if she's negative, the body is going to fight the baby off as if it is an infection or some type of disease. And this leads to a lot of complications and it really leads to a lot of miscarriages, okay? So I like to kind of compare this to sickle cell. Um, if you have the trait, right? You wanna be mindful of the person that you are sleeping with because if they have the trait, you guys are gonna give birth to a baby who has full-blown sickle cell disease. So you need to know that about yourself. You need to know your status. You need to know whether you have the trait or whether you are RH negative. Um, if you are RH negative and you do get with a person who is positive and you have a baby who is going to be positive inside of you, there are things you can do to you know, save the baby. There is a shot that they can give you. Um, but I have known women to have challenging experiences of with getting that shot um, and saving their baby's life. So know your status um, beforehand. Um, and if you do end up in a situation where you're unable to and you find out after the fact, do your research and find out your options so that you can save your baby's life and your body doesn't, you know, ultimately attack the baby and cause you to have a miscarriage. So that's all the heavy stuff, you guys, that we think we need to go to the OBGYN for. But as you can see, a lot of these things are things that we can manage ourselves and we don't necessarily need them like we have been programmed and conditioned to think we do. As you manage all of that in your second trimester, don't forget to enjoy your pregnancy. As I said, you're going to get a lot more energy around this time and there's a lot of fun things going on. It's not so serious, even though I just spent this whole video talking about the serious things that we've been programmed to believe that we need the OBGYN for, okay? During your second trimester, take advantage of this time when you have a boost in energy and you're feeling good and you're just enjoying your pregnancy to plan out what your birth experience is going to be like. Will there be a midwife? Will there be a doula? Is there going to be family in there? Is it going to just be you and your partner? Start building that birth team. Take your birthing classes, read your books, watch your videos, just educate yourself on birth period, whether you've already given birth before or not. Whatever you do, just don't wing it, okay? Educate yourself on the type of birth experience that you want to have. Take prenatal exercise classes, go swimming, keep doing practices to help you be in tune with your body consistently. Meditate, yoga, uh, be outside in nature, go out for walks, get under that sun, get that vitamin D, <laughs> go shopping, go buy baby clothes and baby stuff and just mentally prepare yourself for the big day. Do a lot of visualization, visualize how you want that day to go. Keep your body and your belly moisturized, okay? That will stop you from itching and also stop you from having stretch marks. Think of baby names. Guess the sex of the baby. Me personally, I never found out the sex of the baby for any of my children, but I always had a, a feeling. Like I just always knew what it was and I was always right. And I always thought that was just so magical and divine that we know even without having the ultrasound. So experience that and trust in that. Celebrate your halfway mark. Um, celebrate feeling better. 
in the morning and just enjoying your pregnancy. Do your Kegel exercises. Make sure you start to sleep on your side now and not on your back and of course on your stomach. Make your baby registry, plan your baby shower, plan your maternity leave. Keep stretching, drinking water, eating healthy, making sure you're snacking throughout the day and you're taking your power nap. Just all that good stuff. Making sure that you're relaxed and you're at peace and every day is just stress Free. Oh my gosh, there's so much that you can do. Take belly photos. Do the belly cast if you want to. Have sex if you want to. <laughs> Work on your nursery. Pay attention to your body. But most of all, don't worry about nothing. <laughs> don't worry about anything. Just trust in the divine. Trust in the divine feminine energy that you have, that you withhold, that you are. It's a lot that you can do and you're going to have the energy to do it. So go ahead and take advantage of that. Because as I said earlier, once you start to phase into the third trimester, you're going to be tired. You're going to be too tired to worry about half of this stuff. So just go ahead and take advantage of this time and this energy. So quick little recap. Coming into the second trimester, the week can vary from women to women, pregnancy to pregnancy, but you want to make sure that you monitor that just by based on how you're feeling. When you start to notice that shift in energy and you're just a little bit more happier to be pregnant and you're not sick so much. Those are all signs that you are going into your second trimester. Once that happens, you want to keep being consistent with all of the lifestyle changes you've made to be conducive to you creating life inside of your womb. Around 20 weeks, you will go ahead and start to measure your fundal height, okay? All you need to do, make sure you use the bathroom first. You want to lay flat on your back. You want to start right here at the top of your ab abdomen all the way down to the pelvic bone, okay? And you want it to be centimeters and you want to make sure that it's um within four centimeters of the week so for instance if you're 20 weeks and you're measuring this then you want your fundal height to be anywhere between 16 to 24 centimeters that's that's to let you know that your baby is growing at the appropriate weight you can also begin listening to your baby's heartbeat at this time, okay? There's a few different methods that you can use, but depending on the method that you choose will depend on how soon you'll be able to hear the baby's heartbeat. I recommend the fetoscope, okay? Because that allows you to be able to listen um, to the baby's heartbeat as well. Um, the peanut horn, I think I'm saying that wrong. I'll put a picture up of the horn that um, we use indigenously. A lot of midwives still use this tool, but it allows for them to hear rather than with the fetoscope, the mom can listen as well. If you don't have access to either one of those, then you can always go with the basic stethoscope. With the stethoscope, you can go, you can use that anywhere from 18 to 22 weeks. You should be able to start to hear the baby's heartbeat. Blood pressure. Check your blood pressure the old-fashioned way if you want to with the cuff and the stethoscope. Or you can invest in an armrest to check your blood pressure. I mean, if push comes to shove, you can go to the drugstore and find one of those machines that you can stick your hand in and, and get your blood pressure checked that way as well. Some stores still have those. It's different technology out there to make it easier for you, but the point is you can manage it on your own. Urine tests is something that is done. You can manage this your own. You can order you some urine test strips, okay? Um, I already said you need to check for your protein and your sugar levels, but urine test strips test for many different things. So do your research and find out what other information you can find out as well. Be responsible for your help. Go to a clinic if you feel like you have an STI or an STD and get the treatment that you need. Decide if you want to avoid vaccinations. Again, I highly recommend it. And also make decisions about ultrasounds, whether or not you want them or not. Um, again, it's not necessary, but keep in mind that it's very hard to straddle the fence with OBGYNs, meaning it's very hard to find an OBGYN that you can only go to for certain stuff, okay? Um, they like to be in control. It's what they were taught. It's, it's just the way that has been normalized is what they do, okay? So they don't really take too well to us acting like we hired them, which is in all truth, the real reality. You know, we hired the doctor. The doctor didn't find us and say, hey, you know, like 
anyways just be smart because it can go left real quick and they can want to involve child protective services and law enforcement so just be smart about things the biggest thing is just to make peace with whatever abnormality may come i mean whatever happens you're gonna love your baby regardless right so don't stress yourself out with trying to find out what's going on um just enjoy your time being pregnant because it does not last long um before you know it it will be over and you don't want to spend that time worrying about things that are out of your control i know that it's a lot easier said than done but i hope that you get the point that i'm trying to make Remember that unassisted prenatal care is all about trusting within yourself, finding validation within yourself, listening and communicating with your body, and just above all knowing, um, and just above all knowing that everything is going to be okay and everything is going to work out and that you are a divine vessel created to birth life into this world and everything will work out how it's supposed to work out. Invest in a glucometer if you are prone to or worried about gestational diabetes. Make sure that your diet includes iron, folate, and vitamin B12. Also make sure your prenatal vitamins include those things as well. And I made a video about prenatal vitamins, so definitely make sure you check that video out too. If you had a baby before, you would already know if you are RH negative. If you've never had a baby before, I highly recommend you go into your primary care provider and just having them test you and find out because that is something that you would definitely benefit from knowing beforehand. A lot of women go through miscarriage after miscarriage until, you know, they finally become aware of their condition and how to prevent it happening if they get with a man who is positive. It's very important because 85% of women are positive. So that means 15% are negative, okay? So know your status with everything, whether it's RH negative or having the sickle cell trait. Because a lot of people who have just the trait live their whole lives without any symptoms at all. So this is it. That's pretty much what the second trimester looks like when you decide to not go the normalized OBGYN prenatal care way and you decide to take the unassisted prenatal care path, okay? A lot of things to manage, but all things are manageable. And of course, you want to just keep everything going, all the lifestyle changes that you made during the first trimester. You want to keep it going. You want to keep it consistent, okay? So I will make the third trimester video soon. Make sure you're subscribed and you hit the bell so you get that notification when the video is available. Thanks for tuning into this video. I love you guys. Stay tuned. Peace, blessings, bliss, abundance, prosperity, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.